Hi students, welcome to the today's module on protein evaluation. This is part 2. Proteins are building blocks and amino acids are the bricks for the protein. Proteins requirements are vital for human growth. Protein requirements are different for various age, stage like physiological stage, like pregnancy, lactation and also gender, the protein requirements varies. Therefore, consuming the right quantity of the protein from the food is very, very important. The quantity of the protein has been prescribed by the ICMR NIN RDA 2010 tells 1 gram per kilogram body weight or the human requirements for the protein. For example, like a 60 kilograms man requires approximately 60 grams of protein every day. It is not just the quantity of the protein, it is the quality of the protein really matters. To assess the quality of the proteins, there are various methods. But today we are going to discuss about the PDCOS that is protein digestibility amino acid corrected score method, which is a gold standard which has been approved by the FAO, WHO, UNA and this has been followed by the various countries across the globe. So, therefore, we will now go into the details of the PDCOS method as a protein evaluation methods. The presently the PDCOS what we call the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score is the gold standard for determining the protein quality. It is used by the Food and Agriculture Organization that is FAO as well as the World Health Organization for determining the protein quality and taking this as a gold standard and they have compared other protein quality evaluations and come to a conclusion PDCOS method is the best method and it could be considered as a gold standard and can be compared with other available protein quality assessment methods. It refers to the quality of a protein in terms of the amino acid requirements. See when we talk about proteins are required for the growth and metabolism and proteins are having the amino acids, there are 20 amino acids which are building blocks for the proteins. So, proteins contains these amino acids, whether human bodies some of them can be synthesized therefore, they are non-essential amino acids. But whereas some of, some of the amino acids body cannot synthesize, such amino acids are called essential amino acids. Therefore, we are bound to eat the essential amino acids through our diet. Therefore, if your diet we are if we are not taking the essential amino acids from our diet, then we are having the protein deficiency problems like Quashiarkar, Marasmus and other protein related problems which can occur. Therefore, consuming the quant right quantity in addition to the proper protein quality is vital for the human health. So, we have chemical scores like by assessing the amino acid scores, the PDCAS that is protein digestibility corrected amino acid score looks at the limiting amino acid. So, you when you have screened for the protein, you will find around 20 amino acids which is composed of both essential amino acids as well as the non-essential amino acids. So, when PDCOS also takes into the consideration of the digestive efficiency, not that whatever we consume eat all that protein will be digested, no that we have seen that we have understood from the protein quality assessment methods by looking at the nitrogen retention or the protein efficiency ratios. So, therefore, considering the digestive efficiency of a particular protein is very, very important and vital before it get retained in the body or it should be it, it participated in the uh, metabolic activities. So, what are the regulatory needs in assessing protein quality of human foods? From a regulatory perspective, both public health needs and the economic impact of protein quality characterization 
are important in the selection and approval of methods for assessing protein quality. The public health needs for assessing protein quality are well established. Human requires certain minimal quantities of essential amino acids from a biological available source as a part of larger protein or nitrogen intake. The required amounts of these amino acids vary with the age, physiological condition and state of health. For example, if you take an infant or the child which is in the growing period requires more quantity of the protein as well as the quality of the protein. Also, when a different physiological condition means if a mother is pregnant or lactating for that matter, the physiological conditions are different from a normal healthy woman. If you compare with a normal healthy woman versus the pregnant woman or the lady with lactating phase. So, therefore, the protein requirements are different for the age and the stage and the gender also. So, the economic considerations are derived primarily from, from the need to discriminate with both accuracy and precision the relative efficiency with which individual protein sources can meet human biological needs. It is widely recognized that clinical human studies which measure growth and or other metabolic indicators including nitrogen balance provide the most accurate assessment of protein quality. For reasons of both cost and ethics, it is considered inappropriate to routinely measure protein quality through the use of such techniques. Because when you use the human sample or human volunteers for these studies, ethical considerations also one should keep it in mind. Consequently, assay techniques designed to measure the effectiveness of a protein in promoting animal growth have been utilized. So, therefore, when you have such limitation of human ethical considerations, animal growth studies have been utilized. Mind you, even animal ethical committees are also now in place. Whenever you conduct an any sort of a study, either for a growth study or for a protein efficiency study or nitrogen balance study or if you want to do the PD cost evaluation of a particular food in a laboratory animal which you require even animal ethical committee clearance like you have the human ethical committee clearances even now animal ethical committee clearances are mandate. Since 1919 the protein efficiency ratio method which measures the ability of a protein to support growth in young rapidly growing rats has been used in many countries because it was believed to be the best predictor of the clinical tests. However, after decades of use it is now known that protein efficiency ratio overestimates the value of some animal proteins for human growth while underestimate the value of some vegetable proteins for that purpose. So, therefore, protein efficiency ratios have been seen in a different way because as discussed that if animal proteins have been shown the overestimation it has been given over impact and some of the vegetable proteins have been shown under estimation. Therefore, it is not a proper way of assessing the protein quality of using this PER method. So, rapid growth of rats which increases the need for essential amino acids in comparison to human growth rates is the reason for this discrepancy. For some time the use of an amino acid score has been advocated as an alternative to the protein efficiency ratio. See for example, when you can just screen you could do with an anhydrin assay you can you can dissect out all the amino acids both essential and non essential amino acids which a protein contains can be assessed and a chemical score should be given for that and it can be also used as a protein quality assessment methods. And people have shown instead of using a rat study and which is showing some overestimates or underestimates which has an intricate intricately a sort of a deficiency in this method. So, therefore, an alternative method to this as chemical amino acid score has been advocated. 
although clearly the quality of some proteins can be assessed directly by using amino acid score values others cannot because of poor digestibility and or bioavailability very important point which we have to learn from this is chemical scores are able to tell us what exactly the amino acid pattern or the composition of the amino acids whether they are in a balanced proportion or else not also can be determined by using the uh, chemical score we can even screen all amino acids by using the ninhydrin assay or by ion exchange chromatography or of a different uh, liquid chromatography separation techniques but the problem comes as discussed the digestibility is not considering here when you are assessing the protein quality by using the chemical score so therefore digestibility or bioavailability of these proteins should also be taken into consideration so both amino acid composition and digestibility measurements are considered necessary to accurately predict the protein quality of foods for human diets these should be considered as a criteria for assessing the suitability of this combination of amino acid score and protein digestibility in predicting the protein quality number 1 the methods used should provide results which are consistent with the results from clinical studies designed to assess protein quality any inconsistency between proposed methods and results from clinical studies should be on the side of the safety the method should be applicable to the entire range of foods used in human diets results from collaborative studies should demonstrate excellent repeatability within a laboratory reproducibility between laboratories this is very very important and vital point one should mind it that the ac accuracy and the repeatability of the assays are to be taken into the consideration the method should not require unreasonably large or unreasonably small sample and questions of homogeneity become more important as sample size decreases so the method should permit the assay to be accomplished on the finished product that is on the form of consumers purchase so that we could assess a properly about the quality of the protein the scientific basis for the adoption of protein digestibility corrected amino acid score method what could be the basis which we are now looking into the fundamental measurement of protein quality for human use depends on the growth or on the metabolic balance evaluation procedures performed on suitable subjects of the target population those procedures directly reflect the essential or indispensable amino acid content digestibility of the protein and the bioavailability of the amino acids in a food or a food product recognizing that such tests require 35 to 45 days and cost from 12000 to 18000 dollars per subject and that such studies cannot be done on a routine basis in humans it is necessary to develop a in vitro or animal assay techniques which correlate closely with the data from human experiments rat growth assays have been widely used for predicting protein quality in foods and numerous workers have discussed the appropriateness of these methods the most serious problem with the rat growth assay is higher requirements of rats for some amino acids when compared to humans the protein efficiency ratio per is equal to weight gain of the test group divided by protein consumed by the test group is the official method for assessing protein quality of foods in canada and the united states but it has been severely criticized for not meeting the criteria for a valid routine test a major criticism of the persa is its inability to properly credit protein used for maintenance purpose a protein source may not support growth and have P a per near to zero it still may be adequate for maintenance purposes due to the error introduced by not making allowances for maintenance the per values of proteins of differing quality are not proportional in each other that is a per of 2 cannot be assumed to be twice as good as per of 1 the lack of proportionality to protein quality makes the per method unsuitable for the calculation 
of utilizable protein such as in protein rating, protein in reasonable daily intake and PER which is the official method of evaluating protein claims of foods sold in Canada. The PER and other methods were reviewed in the early conference in 80s where it was agreed that the PR should be replaced by a more appropriate and precise method. So, the nutritive value of protein depends upon its capacity to provide nitrogen and amino acids in adequate amounts to meet the requirements of an organism. Thus, in theory, the most logical approach for evaluating protein quality is to compare amino acids content taking bioavailability into account of a food and human amino acid requirements are important. A number of comparisons have been made using reference patterns such as those derived from egg or milk protein. The first major change in procedure was substitution of provisional pattern of amino acid requirements for the egg protein standard. A hypothetical reference protein derived from the pattern of human amino acid requirements was proposed as the standard for comparison. Shortcomings have been recognized and progress has been made in accurately evaluating human amino acid requirements. Equally, critical for success is the ability to obtain precise measurements of amino acid content in the test protein sources. Finally, to improve on accuracy of scoring procedures, chemically determined amino acid content may have to be corrected for digestibility or biological availability. The validity of early studies were limited by lack of standardized and reproducible procedures for determining tryptophan and sulfur amino acids. By insufficient data on digestibility of protein and bioavailability of amino acids in foods and by uncertainty about human amino acid requirements to be used for the scoring pattern. So, this is the major lack you know because when you are screening, screening for the uh, protein particularly for the amino acids of the tryptophan and sulfur amino acids in a normal procedure you are not accurately assessing. So, there may be a different procedures were adopted and differently these amino acids were determined. During the last few years significant advancements have been made in standardizing an amino acid methodology in reaching a consensus about human amino acid requirements and in obtaining information about the digestibility of protein and bioavailability of amino acids in number of protein sources. So, these developments have facilitated the use of an amino acid scoring procedure adjusted for digestibility which is a better predictor of protein quality for humans than rat growth methods and is in many cases the only practical approach. So, how this will be now determined the PDCA score that is protein digestibility corrected amino acid score in individual foods. To calculate a protein digestibility corrected amino acid score, a test food must be analyzed for proximate and amino acid compositions and protein digestibility value must be obtained from a database or be determined in the rat balance method. So, this is the first essential thing when you want to do the PDCA score. Proximate composition, level of nitrogen, moisture, fat and total dietary fiber should be determined according to the association of analytical chemist method. Protein can then be calculated by using nitrogen to protein conversion factor of 6.25 or appropriate Jones factors also when their precise nitrogen contents are available and the Jones factors are presently available. Where it is not available, the 6.25 factor can be utilized. Foods high in moisture such as meats should be dried before analysis. Similarly, foods high in fat such as meats, nut, whole milk, powder, etc., may require a lipid extraction prior to analysis. Amino acid profile, protein hydrolysates should be prepared and analyzed for amino acids. Amino acid score, amino acid ratios, milligrams of an essential amino acid in 1 gram of test protein divided by milligram of the same amino acid in 1 gram of reference pattern for 9 essential amino acids plus tyrosine and cysteine should be calculated by using the 1985 FAO WHO suggested pattern of amino acid requirements for preschool children that is 2 to 5 years age. The lowest amino acids ratio is determined amino acid score. For example, a pinto bean sample contained 30 
1 milligram per gram of protein of histidine. The respective amino acids ratios for bean sample would be 1.58 to like 1.2 to 1.19, 0.35 like various amino acids have been determined. This would then result in uncorrected amino acid score of 0.8 with a tryptophan as the first limiting amino acid. So, the protein digestibility true protein digestibility should be determined using the rad balance method data on fat and total dietary fiber in test should be used by in adjusting the formulation of the test and the nitrogen free diets they should be equal in levels of total fat and where possible fiber also cellulose should be added to the diet only when the total dietary fiber content of the test food is less than 5% the diet should also contain approximately equal amounts of moisture and lactose in testing high lactose foods such as milk powder. Protein digestibility corrected amino acid score of a test food should be then calculated by multiplying the lowest amino acid ratio and true protein digestibility, so that you get the PDCOS value. In the case of the pinto bean sample having the lowest amino acid ratio of 0 0.8 and a true DAP protein digestibility of 73 percent the protein digestibility corrected score would be 0 0.8 into 0 0.73 is equal to 0 0.58 or 58 percent. So, thus the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score above 1 would be considered as 1 or 100 percent. So, some of the essential amino acid requirements and the contents milligram per gram protein has been given according to the FAO, WHO or the UNU 1985 reference. If you look at like arginine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, cysteine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, these are the essential amino acids and it has been given for 2 to 5 years of the child that is a physical, that is a preschool children, the requirements have been placed and equivalent of the laboratory rat and the casein protein, the composition of these things have been given and 70 percent of the rat requirements have been placed and ratio of 70 percent of the rat requirements to the human requirements have been shown. So, thus FAO, WHO, UNO has been given a sort of essential amino acid requirements for preschool children based on these scores only, the scoring patterns for toddlers, children, adolescents and adults amended values from 2007 WHO, FAO, UNO report if you could see from various up to even more than 18 years that is adult also scoring pattern has been given for the essential amino acids. So, when you have the food mixtures, the full procedures for individual foods may need to be followed, but when data for the amino acid composition and digestibility of the individual components are well established and only the proportions differ, the protein digestibility corrected 36 amino acid score can be calculated by means of weighted average procedures. So, a worked example of a mixture of wheat, chickpea and milk powder, suppose if you have this combination, how one could really work? For example, weights of wheat, chickpea and milk powder 350, 150 and 50 grams and protein contents also has been given as 13, 22 and 34 and individual amino acids like lysine and sulfur amino acid contents, threonine and tryptophan has been given and digestibility factor has been given and ultimately the quality in mixtures are also be placed here and it can be scored ultimately the 73 percent which is coming for this mixture of a wheat, chickpea and milk powder like this. This is an example how one can really come out with a PDCOS value even for the mixtures also. So, what are the advantages or and the shortcomings of this gold standard method of the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score? The protein digestibility corrected amino acid score method is a simple and scientifically sound approach for routine evaluation of protein quality of foods. It should be conveniently used as an additional correction factor in evaluation procedures based on both the quality and the quantity of the protein such as utilizable protein that is gram total protein into corrected score and to replace protein efficiency ratio in protein ratings grams protein in a reasonable daily intake into PER. 
The amino acid score method would be the least expensive of all the suitable routine methods for assessing protein quality of foods, especially if the literature data for protein digestibility are used. Unlike animalysis, which requires several trials for the identification of the actual limiting amino acid, the use of scoring procedures can readily identify the limiting amino acid in a protein source of a diet. The method also provides information about the supplementation and complementation of the potential of protein sources. So, traditional combination of vegetable proteins consumed in some countries such as rice legume in Asia, wheat legume in Near East, maize legume in the Americas have good protein quality because of the amino acid compositions of cereals and legumes complement each other producing a balanced mixture of amino acids. I think you, you should catch here the point about where lysine and the methionine, if you look at these are one deficient will be corrected by the uh, cereal to the rice. So, lysine and methionine can be complemented each other when you are taking the cereal and the pulse together. While the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score can be calculated for any mixture of foods from a knowledge of digestibility and amino acid content of the constant foods. The score of a mixture cannot always be calculated with certainty from a knowledge of the individual scores of the components. Because of the complementary potential between proteins, a statement of utilizable protein alone for a food can be a poor indication of the utilizable protein realized when the food is consumed as the part of a mixture diet. Therefore, in any consideration of nutritional labeling, the use of digestible amino acid values, especially nutritionally important lysine sulfur amino acids tryptophan and threonine or of a total protein digestibility and amino acid values may be preferred to a statement of the scores or of utilizable protein, protein content times corrected score. The use of the food can then be calculated the corrected score for any mixture. A further complication arises from our lack of knowledge of the proportion of the total sulfur amino acid requirements which can be met by cysteine. Without the knowl that knowledge, expression of protein values in terms of the sum total of methionine and cysteine has both theoretical and practical limitations. It has been suggested that the amino acid score method would take into account possible differences in absorption and utilization of amino acid mixtures or amino acid supplemented and proteins of the same amino acid profile possibly due to more rapid absorption of crystalline amino acids than the protein bound amino acids. In practice, however, this effect does not appear to be of great importance in cases involving supplementation with small quantities of the amino acids. In the case of very poor quality proteins, the amino acid scoring approach has been criticized for non-agreement between amino acid scores and estimates are or protein quality based on biological assays. Although there is a good relationship between amino acid score and biological assay of proteins, both biological value and 40 percent, the agreement varies with the limiting amino acid below this level. Proteins completely lacking lysine that is with a score of 0 can have a biological equal to 40 percent due to differing needs for the growth and maintenance of the capacity of an organism to adopt to low intakes of lysine. Similarly, proteins devoid of other essential amino acids can have biological values significantly higher than 0. Poor agreement between amino acid scores and biological estimates such as net protein utilization can also occur at low levels of protein. This drawback is however of limited practical significance because of very few proteins or diets having extremely low levels of essential amino acids. A large discrepancy between amino acid scores and biological value may also occur in the case of foods or food products containing anti-nutritional or toxic factors. In such cases, the elimination of inactivation of toxin or anti-nutritional factors by simple processing such as soaking, draining or cooking can lead to satisfactory prediction of protein value by amino acid scores. For example, soybean is a having good quantity of the protein, also the good quality of the protein, but it has a anti-nutritional factors called the trypsin inhibitors which will affect the protein digestion can be reduced by cooking and other processing methods. So, another criticism of the amino acid score method includes its inability to take 
into account the possible adverse effect of disproportionate amounts of essential amino acids on the utilization of the most limiting amino acid. Excessive levels of non-essential amino acid and non-protein nitrogen may also influence the overall utilization of the dietary protein. However, the possible occurrence of amino acid imbalance in mixed or properly amino acid supplemented human diets does not appear to be of any major practical significance. Some applications of protein digestibility corrected amino acid score, the scores for various types of beans, lentils and peas ranging from 0.47 to 0.71. These products were first limiting in sulfur amino acids or tryptophan for human nutrition. All contained less than 30 percent of the total protein digestibilities of the legumes ranged from a low of 72 percent of the black beans to a medium 89 percent for chickpeas. The soybean products all had a high digestibility is 90 to 98 percent and a high corrected amino acid scores of 0 0.9 to 0.99. The protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores for pre pea proteins from 0 0.6 to 0 0.78 based on tryptophan and or sulfur amino acids as the first limiting amino acids. The higher scorer score for the pea protein concentrate than for whole pea due to the improved protein digestibility. The rapeseed protein products had high fairly high protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores 0.8 to 0.93 with lysine being the first limiting amino acid. Wheat gluten and sunflower protein isolates were similar limiting in uh, lysine and had low protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores of 0.25 and 0.37 respectively. Breakfast cereals such as rice wheat gluten, whole wheat and rolled oats were highly digestible, but low lysine levels resulted in low protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores like 0 0.26, 0 0.40 and 0 0.57 for these particular foods. A sample of peanut meal had a protein digestibility corrected score of only 0 0.52 and was co-limiting in several essential amino acids such as methionine cysteine, lysine threonine or tryptophan. Animal protein products such as egg white, casein and ground beef and beef, kim milk powder, tuna were also all high digestible 94 to 100 percent and a corrected amino acid scores are also very high like 0 0.922 to 1. A sample of pork sausage had however a relatively low protein digestibility corrected score of 0 0.63 due to deficiency in tryptophan. The low protein quality of a vegetable protein source can be improved by addition of supplementary protein or the limiting amino acid and a biprotein complementation. The addition of amino acids to increase protein quality of protein source should only be considered when protein supplementation or complementation have proved to impracticable since benefits from the addition of amino acids have not been demonstrated consistently in humans. So, various proteins and the true proteins digestibility and amino acid scores like for casein is 1, egg white is 1 and the beef is around 0 0.9 and the pea flour if you could take 0 0.79 and lentils are approximately 0 0.6 like that you have a different protein qualities for various proteins based on the protein digestibility amino acid score. Further an excess of supplementary amino acids such as synthetic methionine may have deleterious effects on infants and children. Data on protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores of some protein mixtures having supplementary or complementary effects. The protein digestibility corrected amino acid score of whole wheat flour 0.41 was improved to 0.67 to 91 by the addition of 41 percent rapeseed protein concentrate or soy protein or egg white or pea flour, beef or casein. So, similarly the addition of ground beef gave considerable improvements in the protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores of wheat gluten, sunflower protein isolate, pea protein concentrate and peanut meal. In practice, the amino acid profiles of the infant formulas are however adequately compensated for by the higher levels of protein in infant formulas compared to human milk, resulting in no evidence of amino acid deficiencies in clinical studies. Assessment of amino acid adequacy of infant formulas should therefore be based on a method that takes into account both quality and quantity of the protein. One such method termed amino acid rating has been developed. 42 amino acid profile and protein digestibility by the rat balance method for various forms powder ready to use liquid concentrate etc of cow's milk and soy based infant formulas obtained from four manufacturers have been determined. 
So, likewise the product of amino acid score and total protein was termed amino acid rating. Amino acid scores for the milk and soy based infant formulas ranged from 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 from 0 0.5 to 0 0.81 due to deficiencies in sulfur amino acids or tryptophan. Protein digestibility values in milk and soy based formulas range to 87 to 97 and when corrected for protein digestibility the relative amino acid ratings for all infant formulas except liquid concentrates forms of the milk based formula 77 to 98 percent were above 100 percent. So, likewise the protein quality of the adequacy data of the milk based formula suggested that liquid concentrates may be inferior to powders prepared by the same manufacturers possibly due to more heat treatments involved in their preparations. So, some of these examples how these PD cost values will be affected by processing methods also. To conclude the module what we have learned today about the protein evaluation and particularly we have learned about the PD cost method that is the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score method which has been approved by the WHO, FAO and UNU. And they have prescribed the essential amino acid requirements of 9 essential amino acid requirements particularly for the children between the age of 2 to 5 years and these requirements are the necessary for determining the PD cost values. Particularly the other methods what we have seen is about like PER, BVR, nitrogen balance studies are not considering into the picture of the protein digestibility or the absorption that is the bioavailability. So, therefore, the PD cost method has been approved and worldwide people are utilizing this method and egg protein as well as milk protein PD cost values are 1 whereas, the vegetable protein values are less than 1, but there is an intelligent way of complementing this, uh, these foods different protein sources like cereal and legume together the PD cost values can go up. So, this is the way that a PD cost method can determine the protein quality and by looking at the PD cost values we can intelligently increase the PD cost value by mixing the various combination of the food into the diet. Thank you.